That's it. Okay. Today I will talk to you about uh, what digital identity means in Web3. And uh, I will make a small, uh, a little comparison between what you have in Web2 and Web3. First of all, in order for you to understand the blockchain, let's say that you go into a bar and you don't have money at you. But let's say you don't have your crypto wallet as well. Uh, when you want to buy something, you go to the bartender and you tell him, write me down on your notebook and I will give you the money tomorrow. He will say, okay, he will do that. Then you, then you will say, what if I come tomorrow and you tell me that instead of 10 euros, I have to give you 15 euros? What about, give me a copy of your notebook. You get a copy of the notebook, but then he says, what, about, what if you come tomorrow and tell me that I have to give you 5 euros instead of 10? Okay, let's give everybody a copy of that notebook. So basically that's blockchain, a distributed ledger technology. So everybody has a copy of the notebook, everybody knows what I'm doing, what you're doing, Every, everything is transparent, but it's anonymous. As long as one piece, it's not, a, it's in place, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, you can get rid of it and it gets out of the blockchain. Okay, let's uh, get to digital identity. What is digital identity and how can you migrate it to Web3? Right here, uh, we can see that a digital identity, it's like a backpack that you have with you. It has in it everything that you said, everything that you wrote, everything that you uh, ever thought. And it's written on blockchain. You have two types of digital identity. It's the Web2 digital identity that is controlled by the government and you are owned by the government. Then you have the Web3 digital identity, which is decentralized. And that's what Sourceless does. Creates a new digital identity and gives you full ownership of your data. Right now, let's, uh, let's see what, how, how does Web3 look like in comparison with Web2? First of all, in uh, Web1, you have a static identity with basic usernames. You have minimal personalization, profiling, user interfaces, where basic and uniform, and you have a higher degree of anonymity. Why is that? Because in the web, in the first iteration of the web, in Web1, you could only uh, read things. After uh, you started to read, you wanted to interact. That's how Web2 got in place. Where you have a dynamic identity of linked to a social media account or profile. You have a high level of personalization, user profiles, content and experiences that are tailored for you. You get what you want, not necessarily what you need. Keep that in mind. And also you have a reduced privacy, extensive data collection, and right here I'm talking about the big companies, right? That are collecting your data and that are selling your data just because almost nobody reads that terms and conditions. You just scroll down and you accept. And then you just sold your data and you don't even know it. But History repeats itself, and that's what we learn. One thing that we learn from experience is that we don't learn from experience, but history tells us that it repeats itself. In Web3, you have decentralized, user-controlled identities. You have total anonymity, as I said earlier, but still uh, you are fully transparent, and you have extreme personalization. You are not in sourceless and in Web3. You are not just a user, but a creator. You are definitely a creator, you have, you're empowered and in Web3 through a digital identity it's your birthright to create whatever you want. Now we move forward and uh, let's see what uh, does a www domain mean in comparison to STR domains, a Web3 domain that gives you a full digital identity. It is provided by Sourceless uh, indeed. First of all, in Web2 you have viruses. You are very susceptible to being hacked, to being attacked. And you can protect yourself. Oh, of course, you can get a VPN, of course. You can, uh, you can choose how uh, you want to be targeted by ads. You can customize your cookies, but who does that? 
how, how many of you do that in order to protect yourself? Most of, most of the people don't even notice it. But in Web3, with SDR domains, you have no malware, no viruses. Because as Alexandru Stratulat, our architect, said earlier on the stage, we're, we are a military-grade security network. And that's one of the main components of blockchain, security. You, you can be attacked, but you get the chance to protect yourself. And that's the most important thing. You're empowered to do whatever you want and you have the right to do it. Also, in the, when you want to make a transaction for a bank, the transaction it's, it's approved. If you want to do a transaction on blockchain, it is just confirmed. There, there is a slight but, but very big difference. Also, you have uh, to pay every year for hosting your domain. It gets really, really expensive to host your domain and you have to make a recurring payment but you have no security, almost. In Web3, on the other hand, no one can steal your identity and you don't have a source list for SDR. You have to pay only once. It's a one-time payment, but lifetime opportunity. And ownership, of course. Also, in the Web2, it's very easy to get bullied, to uh, get attacked by people, because they don't like what you say. In Web3, we... Uh, we are very careful with uh, what, who does what and why. So we know how to manage this kind of things through technology, through blockchain. And as I said, we have a military grade security network, so you have no bullying. You have a slow speed in the online environment in Web2 versus, uh, versus uh, a faster network on the blockchain. And also, you are prone to personal data theft. That's on Web 2, of course, because in Web 3, your address is like a passport. And it's written on the blockchain. Whatever gets written in the blockchain, it cannot be overwritten. It cannot be changed, it cannot be improved, it cannot be denied. It's there, and there it will be forever. Now, of course, everybody wants to make money. And in Web 3, you have similar opportunities to Web 2, but let's say that Web 2, uh, Web 3, it's a Web 2 on steroids. So let's see what happened in Web 2. You had uh, domains like Voice.com sold for 30 million dollars in 2019. You have Beer.com for 7 million dollars in 24, 2004. Facebook 8.5 8 million dollars in 2010. So those companies, those big companies, those giants that will come into Web 3 will migrate from Web2 uh, through a seamless process because I don't know what's going on with this phone, I don't know how the semiconductors work, but I know that it's useful for me. I can use it, I can give a call, I can send messages, I can put meat on the table just because I have a phone. So that's why the process, the transition needs to be seamless. And that you can achieve, of course, with a digital identity and of course with the power of blockchain. So, the opportunity comes again. History repeats itself. You can make money. You, can, you could have made money then. You can make money now. Also, we are empowering people through decentralization. We and any other uh, serious blockchain project, because that's what blockchain does. Empowers. Also, you have to have in mind the fact that if you if you don't own your keys, if you forget your private key then that's not your crypto. In, in, in crypto and in blockchain, you don't have a bank behind you to back you up. Even though banks don't fully back you up, as you can, uh, you can probably guess, only 10% of what you deposit you can get back. But you have to be very, very careful with your data and who you share it with. Even though you are protected from malware, that doesn't mean that your keys are safe if you don't take care of them. Also, how can, how can you gain full control over your data? In blockchain, you can just have a digital identity. Then everything that you do, it's like that back, backpack that I mentioned earlier. Everything that you do, that you say, that you write, that you own, it's written in blockchain and it cannot be erased. In Web2, on the other hand, you have to use uh, a VPN, you have to be very careful, so on and so forth. 
Also, how can you achieve decentralization? And is it worth it? Because most people say that uh, they want decentralization, they want to uh, own what they do. You can own what you do, but most people, unfortunately, when everything goes down, they want to have somebody to blame. We're, as humans, we're not very good at, at assuming responsibility, but still, you need, you need a safer place. Right now, uh, we're, uh, we're almost at the end. I will invite you to scan this code. We will, uh, we will have a giveaway. Every uh, domain that you scan today until midnight at this event will be totally free. You can get your first STR domain for free. And also now I want to invite on stage our main architect, Alexandrus Kartulat.